Hi guys, welcome back. Dom here. So today I want to talk about another pillar that I like to include in some of the coaching that I do, particularly with those who wanted to give you just more than just the workout thing or the, the diet thing. And that is the head thing, the mindset, as we call it, or growth mindset. It's become a bit of a fancy term and is getting bounded around of late. However, realistically, it's this. It's simply seeing challenges in life for what they really are and every opportunity, including that, that is a loss as being an opportunity for you to learn and to grow. One of the things that we're going to talk about today is this thing of mindful reflection and A, what is it? How can we use it? And what benefits can we get? So, as I said, think about the importance in both your personal and your professional development if Every time that you come across a challenge, you see it as an opportunity to learn. You see it, this is, here's me, as an opportunity to take a sidestep, to move around, to go up, over, and maybe even an opportunity to go through, much like the dog's about to do with me at the moment, barking in the background. Mindful reflection is one tool as part of a whole subset of tools that we can do in fostering this growth mindset. So let's talk about mindful reflection. What is it? Well, realistically, it's like there are three probably things that we're going to talk about. One is recognize the challenge. Daily reflection upon what we did during the day, what went well, what didn't went well, what the challenges were and how we encountered. But more importantly, how we reacted to them are part of us and our recognition of reflecting back. Number two, acknowledging success. We are all too easy to jump to fuck it, I messed up. Or someone else is always likely to tell you that you messed up, so don't worry about that. But acknowledge that today I did a good thing. I worked around it. I, you know, I did this thing and I didn't do that thing and I didn't react and it didn't get me and I didn't do that and I didn't get pissed off, but I navigated a way around it. You know, I took out my mind's Google Maps, took out the tolls, the bridges, and found another path. Whether it was faster, slower, didn't make a difference, but I found the path and therefore those little victories are the things that we wanna you know, enjoy because they also reinforce this positivity in the thinking that we do. Number three, learning opportunities. As we said, every opportunity is something that we can learn something from. Remember the, as kids when we were growing up, don't touch the stove, don't touch the stove. Tss. Oh shit, don't touch the stove because the stove is hot. We learn from that, right? We see that might be hard, but we see these things. So therefore, emphasizing the way that we view certain things like setbacks. Setbacks are objects that set us up for a comeback, some people even say. But they're all about growth and learning. Now, this mindful reflection stuff, how the hell can we even do it? <laughs> As you can hear, she's barking at the neighbor's dog. I'm about to yell at her and she knows that it's coming. First of all, set some time aside. People like to use diaries, journals, gratitude, whatever it is, but allocate a specific time each day for you to reflect on what happened. Preferably somewhere where it's quiet, it's not stimulating, it might be just simply, it might be your way home on the train or the bus or the commute where you're gonna simply think about what had happened. A lot of people like music, like motivation stuff, this is a good way just to put maybe on some white noise and reflect on the day. People talk about journaling as a good secondary option. It encourages you to write down your thoughts, your feelings, what were the challenges, how did you handle them, what were the successes. For some people, that's their way. Other people go, oh, journaling is foo-foo. You know, it's not dear diary, I met a nice boy today. But journaling can and has always worked as a way for most people. Anyone with great level of success, you will always find that at some point in their time, they kept a journal. Now in the digital age, we might have voice notes, we might have something else, we might have something in a diary that pops back up to remind us later on. But some way of keeping a record of what happened, I journal all my workouts. Oddly enough, I've got a stack yay thick of little A5 books that have got every workout that I've done since the day that I started recording them. And each one of them is a learning activity. Number three, let's talk about reflective questions. So the ability to ask the questions about what could have, would have, should have, 
but didn't happen. So prompts is what did I learn today? How can I improve on that next time? So you might have a colleague, let's go down this path, who in your opinion, they're just an absolute asshole. No, no doubt about it. Their, their job is to make your job difficult. And each time you encounter them, eventually you'll get to the stage where you'll work out, there's not really much you can do about that. You can't make them change, but maybe you have to change the way that you react to them. It might be a flippant comment, it might be a sideline, it might be you just let them become an absolute prick until the point where you build up and then you find a way to tackle that. A lot of people like the fist. Who knows, maybe that's not appropriate for you in your workplace, but you will work out some way and to do that, you're gonna ask yourself a series of questions. Finally, focus on growth. Yep, yeah, it says me sitting here in the back of my gym focusing on growth, not talking about growth of the muscles, but growth of the brain. You see, remind yourself to focus on things that you can control, not stuff you can't control. Like today here in Sydney, it is Monday the 19th, it absolutely shut down for God knows how long. There's a leak in the front of the house, there's a leak in the back, the gutters aren't working, it's overflowing, I can't control that. But what can I control? I can make sure the dogs aren't crapping in the house because they do not like the thunder and lightning that we did. And then therefore, I controlled that by also taking them out in the thunder and lightning when it wasn't as bad to help them get used to their growth mindset. So how can you grow from those experiences? Probably what we wanna do. Now, the final thing, not the conclusion, but the final thing on this, Cultivating your growth mindset will say there are a lot of tools. You can go and Google, you can use ChatGPT, you can do whatever, but you're going to find the way that works for you. Buying someone else's $4.99 product doesn't necessarily give you the right path. You can buy multiple of them and then find that your path is either simpler, maybe more comprehensive, maybe more complex, but you'll find your path. But the one thing I do want to do and I want to leave you with is this. It's got to be a daily habit. No different than us in the gym about trying to build muscles or eat a bit better and not eat the shit that's in the middle aisles of the grocery store. It's a continuous thing. It's ongoing. You will never ever reach the end. Growth mindset is that's what it's all about. There is always another opportunity. There is always another setback. There's always another sidestep. And there's always another opportunity to learn. Now, why am I doing this? Well, because in a career prior to being a personal trainer, I was a management consultant, we would always come into clients' businesses and we would always start with a fresh set of eyes. My, my go-to was what I called the brown paper bag project. And that sounds a bit stupid, but I would have this massive one meter wide roll of brown butcher's paper. And I would simply go into the room and I would cover the room and we would start in the left hand corner and we would keep going and working with the clients until we filled it. We found every obstacle, every sidestep, every setback, every prick, person, system that wasn't working for us until we mapped out what was the right way. We started with the as is, I've said this before. As is, it's here. To be, I want to be here. But what really should it be is somewhere in the middle. And that's what I simply use even in training. A lot of people don't get it. They think you're a fucking idiot. But at the end of the day, this physical fitness stuff, this nutrition stuff, this lifestyle stuff is all about us growing. Otherwise, we just wouldn't fucking do it. And we would be like every other common bastard sitting on the sidelines of life, getting fat and just hoping, hoping that there's enough money in that retirement fund to pay someone wipe your ass.